All right, in the last video, we talked about warnings and errors that we might get from the robot program, um, what they might mean, why they happen, and hopefully give you uh, some starting points how to solve these problems and um, create grasshopper definitions that create valid robot programs. In this video, I will focus on problems that can occur that might not give you a direct warning, um, but they can still mess up your uh, robot program and cause uh, uh, a lot of troubleshooting if you don't understand what's going on. But as with most technical problems, as soon as you know what's going on, um, they become quite apparent. This first example is a very simple robot program. We only have this one point, so this is the only thing that is uh, connected to these uh, planes. I also disconnected the tool. So this is a very simple robot program. We only have the um, these planes, um, this one plane, and this is a point that is located at minus 30 in x direction, 520 in y direction, and 425 in z direction. Now, if I send this to the robot, in this case, it's a universal robot add with a UR sim. We can see that the robot moves into position. And if we look at it, we can see that this pose basically um, matches the one that we had in Grasshopper. However, if we go into the move command and select feature base and look at the coordinates of the TCP in relation to the base, we can see that they don't match with the coordinates that we set in Grasshopper. And if this was the real world, this would mean that this robot would be at a different place than we would expect it to be. We would have uh, wanted it to be uh, 425 in Z direction and it's actually at 279, which is much lower, so it might have crashed into something. Um, why did this happen? Um, this might be something that is difficult to troubleshoot. However, it's uh, quite obvious and some of you might have already uh, noticed it. Uh, the robot that we have here is a UR5 and the robot that we used in Grasshopper is a UR10. And in the last video, I told you that the first target in a robot is a joint motion with axis rotation. So instead of a coordinate, the actual configuration, the actual um, uh, angles of each joint are sent and um, this is the reason why this pose might look correct, but since it's a smaller robot, it actually um, did not go to the correct position. This is something not all robot plugins do. Some other robot plugins um, uh, don't do it this way. Um, however, this is something that gives us uh, um, that gives us more consistency in other ways. But this is one problem that can happen. So if we don't choose the right robot, um, which is something with universal robots. Uh, there are not many uh, different um, uh, sizes of robots, but for example, um, KUKA or ABB have hundreds of different uh, um, models of robots. Some of them might be slightly different, have slightly different uh, dimensions. This is something that you should really um, make sure that you have the right robot, especially if you have multiple robots, if you maybe switch between universal robot uh, UR10s and UR5s, uh, make sure that the right robot is selected. Um, uh, quick way to distinguish them, the UR10 has this uh, kind of edgy uh, elbow joint and the UR5 has this rounded elbow joint. And if we now use the UR5 in Grasshopper, hit upload, get our start confirmation that we did in a previous video. And if we now look at the coordinates that we get now, they match uh, the ones that we set pretty closely. And as you know, universal robots have a um, accuracy of 0 0.5 millimeters. So this is well inside of that um, tolerance. So minus 30, 520, 425. So make sure you have the right robot selected um, as the one that you're either using in a UR sim or in the real world. All right. Another problem that you might run into that is difficult for me to um, show with the UR sim, but that is something that is um, that can happen quite quickly in the real world, is 
that we might use um, the wrong tool weight. And in that case, the robot simply goes into a protective stop since uh, there's too much force exerted on it. It thinks that the tool weighs maybe half a kilo and it actually weighs two kilograms. So there's more force. The robot thinks it hits something and will actually stop. So make sure that the weight of the tool is always set correctly. Um, the next thing that we will look at is the fact that um, our robot uh, in Grasshopper might be oriented slightly differently than our robot in the real world. So always make sure that you know where the um, Y and X axis are on your robot. Otherwise, you might be um, whatever you place in Rhino and you think it's in front of the robot might actually be behind the robot or on an, another side of the robot. So that is also something that you need to keep in mind, especially, of course, as always, the more uh, fragile and the more um, dangerous the tools get that you, you're using, the more important it is to, to make sure that you uh, know where something is located, both in the digital model, but also in the real world. Um, next thing that you should always, of course, uh, set is the right TCP to make sure that the um, TCP actually uh, matches the physical tool. And for that, we should also make sure that the tool uh, is connected or mounted in the same way um, as it is in Grasshopper. And to check this, we can always look at this part here. This is the um, uh, basically the output of the uh, tool cable. There's a cable connector right here. And this is something that we can use to easily verify is our tool in the right direction. So if you have a tool connected to the robot and it actually is 90 degrees um, rotated uh, in relation to this uh, connector, then you always know, okay, there's a mismatch between the digital and the physical object. The next thing that I want to show you is the... Um, um, uh, what can happen if we set our blend radii too big. So now we have this uh, very simple um, uh, rectangle here. I will reference it in Grasshopper. Set one rectangle. Well, I can then, for example, use the um, control points. In this case, this will just give me the four uh, corners of the triangle uh, of the rectangle, and get x y planes on each of them, and use these five planes. So the first plane is uh, done twice. Use these as my inputs. As you can see, the robot approaches the plane from the wrong side. So we um, simply use a flip plane component to flip our plane. And now we will add a zone input. And if you remember from a previous video, the zone input is the blend radius of, um, of our uh, robot motion. And if I have a very large blend radius, so components, um, zone parameter, especially if it's a zone parameter that might be larger than the um, distance between multiple, um, multiple points. And if I then send it to the robot, hit start, you can actually see that the robot moved to the first uh, point, but then it didn't do anything else. It just does not seem to uh, go through each of these five uh, points. And if we go into the log, we can see that we have overlapping blends in a move J. A waypoint was skipped. 
And this means that basically the blend radius that we set is so large that um, the robot actually doesn't go to this point and actually skips this point because it would uh, try to to um, to blend it anyways. And this is something that can happen quite easily. Remember, this is in millimeters. So um, uh, if we set this down to a more reasonable amount, then we will actually get the robot to move uh, to all of these coordinates. All right. There are, of course, many other um, many other problems and things that you can run into with uh, the robots plugin and robots in general, simply because um, they're quite um, complex machines, quite capable machines. And since you also have to do everything yourself, you have to de define your, your motion paths yourself, you have to create the tools yourself. There's a lot of um, things that can go wrong. Um, don't be discouraged by it. Um, if this is something that you're using in university, um, I highly encourage you to, to uh, take the time to work through these problems and to also connect with others, see, um, uh, maybe find other students that have worked with these machines um, ask them if you have a problem. Of course, if you're using them as a job, uh, that's a, a different story. Um, but um, there's a lot of potential still in industrial robots in so many applications, especially in design and architecture and digital fabrication. And um, I hope to see cool projects with uh, robots in the future. So if you have any more problems, um, if you run into any other issues, uh, let me know. You can contact me here on YouTube and also on Instagram and GitHub.